Okay, back to Tachnun, what we were discussing. So we're learning that you don't see Tachnun in a shul where there's going to be a bris mila that day, or if the father of the baby, the sandik, that means the one that holds the baby, or the moil, if any of them are in shul, even the bris is not going to be in shul. So you don't see Tachnun during Shachris. After a bris, it says in Shechonar, for Mincha you do say Tachnun, Unless, if you're davening at the bris, in other words, it's an afternoon bris, and right after the bris, you have a minyan for mincha, so then you don't see tachnun. But otherwise, even the, the, the father of the baby also doesn't say tachnun, I mean, it says tachnun after the bris for mincha. It's just a shachris, you don't say, you don't say tachnun. The same thing, I said, if you're davening eight till the botanic by the bris, if it's still at the bris, the kid's still there. Where did you go, to China? I say what? If it was, I said, after the bris, you make a minion, the kid's there. Okay, next. You don't say uh, if there's a minion, if, if there's a chasen in shul, or a kala for that matter, uh, but usually the kala's not in shul. But if there's a chosin in shul, you don't see tachlin for the whole week. That if either the chosin or kala were never married before. But if the chosin and kala were both married before, let's say a widower marries a widow or a divorce marries a or either way, if it's a second wedding for both of them, then you don't say tachlin only three days. You only say tachlin three days. If either of them is the first time wedding, so then you don't see tachlin for seven days. I that mean, you mean if it's the sixth for each? No, no. The second time is three. If you, even if they got married ten times. Okay. Now you don't see tachlin on certain days of the year. You don't see tachlin shchedesh tu ba'av chamishas b'shvat chanukah. There's a bunch of days everybody knows that you don't see tachlin. Now normally. And the day that you don't see Tachnun, you don't see Tachnun the Mincha before also. Like for instance, Shabbos, you don't see Tachnun, so Friday afternoon, you don't see Tachnun at Mincha. Erev Deshchodesh at Mincha, you don't see Tachnun. There's only a few exceptions of this, and that is Erev Rosh Hashanah, Erev Mincha before Erev Rosh Hashanah, before Erev Yom Kippur. Pesach Sheni, those, uh, then you do see Tachnun, but those are the three exceptions. Generally speaking, when you don't see Tachnun for, let's say, Tuba of the 15th of Av, you don't see Tachnun Mincha before. Uh, according to our custom, we don't see Tachnun from the Shechid Yisivan until the 12th day of Sivan or whatever. Okay, that's generally speaking. Now, Monday and Thursday, we know we, say have, a, we have a longer Tachnun. Vahurachum. Why do we say Tachnun longer? Why is there a longer Tachnun on Monday and Thursday? So the reason for that is because when Mesh went up to the get the second Luchis, he went up on Monday, Thursday, and he came back on Monday. He went up to Har Sinai the third time to get the second Luchis. He went up on the Thursday and came down on a Monday. So those were special days, so to speak, of Kapara. So because they're special days of Kapara, the Chazal instituted a longer Tachnun called Vuhurachum. But that's uh, generally, if there's no Tachnun, you don't say that either. Okay, next, after Tachnun, it's in the order of Davening, so after Tachnun you say half Kaddish and then you go to, say, to create a safe, to take the Sefer Teda. Now, there's a lot of dinam about how to take a Sefer Teda out, how to hold it, how to carry it. There's a lot of dinam that people are never learned, they're just unaware of it. So first off, just to give you an example, there are even two opinions in, in Halacha when you want to open the Arden Kedish, the Pereiches, do you open it right to left, or do you open it left to right? There's two opinions in Allah, actually. What the meaning is, do you open it left to right, or do you open it right to left? Our custom is, and that's the general custom most places, that you open from right to left, so you go this way. Because if somebody did it the other way, it's also fine, because there's opinions that that's the way you're supposed to do it. There's different men hogim, of how it should be done. Now, when you take out the Sefer Torah, you're supposed to hold it on your right hand, on your right side. When you take out a Sefer Torah, when you take carrying a Sefer Torah, you're supposed to hold it on your right side. Hmm. Also, with the front of the Sefer Torah out. In other words, 
the front of the Sefer Torah is when you put it down, so when you open it, that's the front of the Sefer Torah. So when you carry a Sefer Torah, you're supposed to hold it on your right side, the front facing out. And then when you go to, let's say, from the Chazan to the, to the Shulchan, where you read the Torah, you're supposed to go via north, and when you go back, you go via south. In other words, if this way is east, so this way is north. This way is south. That way is west. So when you carry this dinim and this shchunar says, how do you carry a sefer Torah? How do you go? Seem because seem let's see there's other cages there would be quicker going at the, the, through the south way instead of the north way. So it says in halacha, you go take it and going to the shulchan to read, you go on the north side. When you come back, you take it back on the on the south side. And what? There's no rule about that. Usually they, I mean, normally that's what is done. You, you close the heart in Kedush and then you give it to the Chazan. If somebody did it the other way, there's no big uh, avail with it at all. They did it. What? I'm sure there's reasons for it. I've never seen a reason for it. I mean, sure there's definitely reasons. I don't know. Um, now, when the Sefer Torah is being taken, every person has to get up when the Sefer Torah is walking by you. And technically it says you're supposed to um, follow the Sefer Torah. The reason why it's not done, because then it becomes a balagan. But halachically, when they carry the Sefer Torah, let's say from the Arden Kedush to the place to, where you're reading it, halacha says... Halacha says you, everybody's supposed to follow it. The reason why it's not done because then it becomes a whole balagan in the show. But what it does say in Halacha that at least you have to follow it with your eyes. That means when they're taking out a Sefer Torah and they're carrying it to read the, to, and the Shulchan, Halacha, you have to follow the Sefer Torah with your eyes. It's a just respect for the Sefer Torah. Until the Sefer Torah is put down. Halacha, you're supposed to... Um, even, even right. No, not if you're in the middle of Amida. No, middle of Amida, you're not allowed to do anything. You just continue davening. I'm saying that if you're not davening, you know, if you're done, whatever. Okay, next. Um, when you get called up for an aliyah, you have to go up the shorter way and go back down the longer way. Here it's not necessarily north and south. When you carry the Sefer Torah, you carry it north and you bring it back south. But let's say somebody is sitting here and they haven't, they're called up to the Torah, they should go to the quickest way, to the Aliyah. When they go back from the Aliyah, they're supposed to go the longer way. Again, this is just a sign of excitement to get the Aliyah, to be called to the Torah, and, you know, leaving the Sefer Torah, you just go in a, in a shorter way. Okay, next. When somebody... You have to go fast also, or... You're supposed to go fast, number one. Why should people... Why should people wait for you? <laughs> there's something called, believe it or not, there's Tircha de Tzibura. Tircha de Tzibura means you don't, you're not matriach, you don't bother the community waiting for somebody. The reason why you take out two Sefer Torahs, why don't you just take out one and roll it to the second? So it says the reason of Tircha de Tzibura. It's, it's bothering the community. And because of that, you have to take out the Sefer Torah before davening or whatever and roll it to the right place that you shouldn't have to roll Sefer Torah. Why? Because people are, therefore, when people are going to the Amid, they, should, they shouldn't fall asleep on the way. They should go right away to the Amid because there is a din of Tech the Siburah, which is a very powerful halacha, by the way, and not making a community wait. Okay, now, when you get a Sefer Torah, when you get called up to the Sefer Torah, there's a lot of different customs, how you do it. But the Braille, even in kids, it says, you sh they show you where you're supposed to, uh, let's go back a minute. We discussed this in the past, that years ago, they didn't have anybody reading the Torah. There was no Balkari. They had was, you got called up to the Aliyah, you read it yourself. You read it yourself. And they didn't need a book because everybody was versed in how to read. And if you didn't know how to read, you didn't get the Aliyah. That's it. 
So they didn't have a, a Balkari. Nowadays we don't have that because not everybody is able to read the Torah just you know, properly. So we have somebody reading the Torah for everybody else. But in reality, the person that gets the Aliyah is really supposed to be the one reading it. And that's why he's making a separate bracha because why don't you just make one bracha beginning, one bracha at the end? Because every person is a separate reading. So ideally, a person has to read the, the Aliyah itself. We can't. So therefore, Allah says that the person, unless if you're in parts of davening where you're not allowed to talk, or to be discussed, you have to read along quietly together with the Balkari. You don't necessarily have to read the trap, you know, the singing of it, but you have to read the words together with, if you're able to. You're supposed to read along with the Balkari quietly, obviously not to make it loud, because then people won't hear it, either one of you. So you have to read along quietly together with the Balkari. Because of this din, by the way, there's a very interesting thing. In Chabad, the custom is that we don't add aliyahs. You know, during the week, Monday, Thursday, for Rosh Chodesh, four aliyahs, you're not allowed, everybody, Halacha says you're not allowed to add aliyahs. On Shabbos, you're allowed to add aliyahs, right? But in Chabad, Rabbi Rai, based on the Tzemach Sedek, has a response to the tshuva, that you don't add aliyahs. Now the question is, the mission of Megillah says you can add alias. It says clearly in the Mishnah in Megillah, you're allowed to add alias in Shabbos. And yet in Chabad, it's, we're emphatic that you don't add any alias. If you need more alias, you make another Torah reading. So why is it that we don't add alias? So the Samach Sadiq writes that this that the Mishnah said, you can add alias, was only in those years when everybody read. There was no Balkari. When everybody read their aliyah, so that's when you're allowed to add aliyahs because everybody is reading their own portion and they're making berachah satayra on that portion. So therefore, that's when the Mishnah says you can add aliyahs. Nowadays, that we, the person himself doesn't read it out loud. The Balkari reads it, so Semach Sede calls, you're not allowed to add aliyahs. And that's why our custom is we don't add aliyahs. Because, again, this, the, this that the Mishnah says you're allowed to add aliyahs is only when everybody made... There was no reader, there was only the person himself read the Ali and made a bracha. Okay, bracha. What? Would you like a bracha of Atala? Not a bracha of Atala, but uh, I mean, I would, he doesn't use the word bracha of Atala, but uh, he, he, that's, then you can't add Ali. Right. How about nowadays? Yeah, but even if that's one person reading, what's with all the other alias? Generally speaking, generally speaking, from running a shul aspect of it, you shouldn't, the rabbi shouldn't allow people that want to come up and read their own aliyah, they shouldn't allow it. No. Just running a shul way, not mitzvah halacha. Why? Because this guy wants to do it, so this guy will want to do it. This guy maybe knows how to do it, this guy doesn't know how to do it. And he's going to end up making mistakes, right? And either you're going to correct the mistakes or not correct the mistakes. So it's a question, are you yet to create or not yet to create? So you make it across the board. That's why, even when the Chacham, the, the whenever it was instituted that one guy reads, right? You find even big scholars, I mean the Chacham scholars, they don't, when they get Aliyah, they still don't read their own Aliyah. But they could, why don't they? If that's the way it's supposed to be. Because that's not, the, now the Takon is Chacham, and the meaning is, this is the way you do it, and this is the way you do it. You don't start letting everybody, uh, so Bar Mitzvah kids will read Maftar, what they have to Pasha. Halachically, you can even have uh, seven different Balkaris. Even today, a lot of uh, teenage kids, Minyonim, yeah, where the teenagers prepare the Kriya, so some of prepare half the parsha, a third of the parsha. There's a halacha, there's mamish, nothing wrong with it. But you're not having one uh, kid read it. One, okay. Now, so. Uh, I have a different question about reading. What? If, if the Malkaria that keeps making uh, mistakes in, uh, in Korea on the pronunciation, again and again and again. The only time halachically. Halachically, the only time you have to correct the Balkari 
is if he makes a mistake that changes the meaning of the word. Okay? If it, cha- if it doesn't change the meaning of the word, like for instance, in the Miguel, you have Mordechai, Mordechai. You have uh, sometimes when you have Snachta, it's on, and otherwise it's not. You know, there's. Uh, so then, Alpidin, you don't have to change it. It doesn't change the meaning of the word. But if a guy reads instead of Yoshev, reads Yoshav, which is present tense versus past tense, so then you're changing the meaning of the word, so then halachically you have to correct it. In many places, in Baidat Samach Seda, they even corrected the guy made a mistake in Kriya, okay. in the, in the Trot. But again, in, in, Should that be changed if it's That's a, a complicated halacha shayla. If a guy has a chazaka, and why isn't he, what is he making the mistakes? Was he warned? Is he being paid? Is he not paid? A lot of, a lot of ink has been spilled on those things when you can take away a chazaka from somebody, of somebody who's doing something for many years. It's not so simple. No, I'm saying it's really not so very simple because sometimes if a guy's mom is making a lot of mistakes, then you can tell him that's it. Go fly a guy. Uh, but if he's not, then again, it, it's, every case has to be judged individually because there's a lot of minor details that could change the halacha. You know, if he has a chazaka, chazaka is pretty powerful in halacha. There's even, I mentioned this many times, there's a shot of a guy has a chazaka of blowing shaifer. Yeah? The guy is a chazaka blowing shaifer. Uh, one guy blows the first day, one guy blows the second day. Ruven blows the first day, he has a chazaka. The first day, Rosh Hashanah, and Shimon has a chazaka blowing the second day, Rosh Hashanah. Now the first day is Shabbos. So there's no shaifer blowing. Who reads the second day? Does Ruven read it because it's the first shaifer blowing? Or you say, no, if the shayfer blowing is his, there's no shayfer, that's his problem in the shayfer. There's a lot of chuvis written on that. Or I'll tell you another case, which is more practical, but this is more of a joke, it's late. Um, you have a 6 o'clock minion and a 7.30 minion, right? So, now, on a holiday, it's made from 7.30 minion and 9 o'clock minion. Okay? Now, there's a guy that has a chazaka of the davening for the omid, He's an availus, right? He has a chazaka for the six o'clock minion. Now it's a holiday. So it's not six and 7.30, it's 7.30 and nine. The chazan of six o'clock, does he have a right to the 7.30 minion? If a guy davens every day 7.30, says, no, this is my minion, I daven 7.30. Who has the right to the omid? By the way, it's not a joke. It's, it's an issue. Machajin is a measurement of a man, Kim Shivalag, Altair of Hanan Kashimed, Nothing about 